Uncle Hoosh's hat. Hey guys, welcome back to Harrison Hacks. Today I'm going to be showing you an updated version of the Portable Game Station 1.5. This was created by Herb Fargus. Basic, blah. Basically, this is a portable emulation station for 64-bit Windows. So, what I've done here is I have updated emulation station to J. Ross's latest version. I believe it's 2.220. It's his latest version. Um, latest stable release so that has been updated so what else have I updated is the systems RetroArch is now 1.6.0 which is the latest version as of this video um, I have added WinVice um, ScumVM is there the latest RetroArch I do not have Recast we're using Null DC for Dreamcast and it's all there PPSSPP, which is the latest version. PCSX2 is the latest version. There is a portable version of Kodi. Um, this is the latest Kodi, 17.3. Uh, EPSXE is included. However, I am using the RetroArch Core um, to handle all the PlayStation games in this build. DOSBox is included. I have not set it up. I'm not familiar with DOSBox, but I did include the latest version that I could find here. Um, Dolphin, this is the latest version, this is for running Wii and GameCube. And then Semu 1.8.2b, which is the latest release of Semu for the Wii U. Um, and that's what I've done there. As far as themes go, uh, I want to give a big shout out to David Marty. Um, his new showcase theme is phenomenal. Check out his, his uh, YouTube, check out his GitHub. Excellent work if you want emulation station themes. This guy does amazing work. Uh, my hat's off to him. He did this for the Raspberry Pi, and I had commented telling him, you know, this is such a great one. Is there any way you can add PlayStation 2, the Wii, and the Wii U? Uh, and sure enough, he did uh, within a couple of days. So, I mean, that that's pretty good because the theme is, is really, really nice, and uh, I appreciate all their hard work. So, before I get started showing you this, I just want to give my hats off to Herb Fargus. Jay Rasa and David Marty because without them this this build wouldn't be what it is um, what it's become so first thing you want to do with this portable game station 1.5 is go into dot emulation station and what I recommend getting from uh, arcade punks is the unofficial hyperpie PC bias pack and you're going to want to get that and extract it into your portable game station, dot emulation station, systems, retro arc, system folder. And I have it extracted here. And it gives you all these BIOS files that you're going to need. Now you have all of these and so on and so forth. So once you have those, there are a couple more that you're going to want to do. So in systems, we're going to want to do it to PCSX2. Um, you go in, and this is included in the HyperPi PC unofficial BIOS pack. Uh, BIOS, put the PS, PS2 BIOSes in here. And we're going to want to do Null DC. For Null DC, you go in your data folder. And you're going to want to have DC underscore boot, DC underscore flash, DC underscore NV mem, and FSCA dash table. And you're going to want to have those four files in this folder. So once you've done that, you're going to be in your dot emulation station folder. You're going to go to ROMs and add some ROMs. So I'm going to be a little specific about certain systems and their ROMs. Uh, 3DO. I get mine from um, MU Paradise, and they come in bin Q format. They work perfectly for me. Um, let's see. So, with Atari 2600, let's just do properties. 
So this is a bin file, bump and jump dot bin. I, I, I like to unzip my my ROMs for certain systems. The Ataris would be one. Um, for Dreamcast, I'm using CDI files and they work they work for me. Um, obviously uh, FBA and MAME are going to be zip files. Hmm. There are some, so we've got GameCube here, now this is an ISO, and Game & Watch, I'm using MGW files, um, let's see, Nintendo DS, I'm using the .NDS files. For PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16, uh, I suggest not using zip files. Uh, use the .pce files. Um, what I've noticed is when I launch a PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16 game within a zip file, it extracts the PCE file. So now, the next time I launch my emulation station, I have both games, two of the same game, listed um, within emulation station. So you're going to want to ex use those ones extracted. Another one I can think of that does that is Virtual Boy. Uh, it does the same thing. It extracts my zips to .vbs. So all I do is just use .vbs instead of using zips. Uh, let's see. For Sega Saturn, I've got... It's, it's either ISO or BIN. So it's ISO, Sega Saturn. Mm. Sega CD, I'm using BinQ. Uh, for Wii, using ISO. Wii U, I'm using WUX or WUD, uh, whichever you prefer. I always, I have a video um, that shows you how to compress your WUDs down to WUXs. So your WUD file of Super Mario 3D World would be 23.3 gigabytes. This is down to 2.61. 2.61 gigabytes. Uh, that's why I use the WUX files. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is uh, straightforward. I guess I could show you PSP. Uh, I'm using IS. This is an ISO or a CSO. I'm not sure. ISO. For PSX, I'm using PBP as well as BinQ. They both work. And for PlayStation 2, I'm using BinQ um, as well as ISOs. And they work as well. So the the um, theme, I've, I've, I've only included the showcase theme. It's, it's a, a really, really great theme, again, by David Marty. Uh, excellent work. So we'll go ahead and launch. Um, because I'm recording right now, I'm going to launch windowed, but I usually launch full screen. Um, if you're not familiar with the portable emulation station, you, you don't you don't open it using emulation station. You use it launch portable, either full screen or windowed. I'm going to launch windowed right now. Now, one thing I should mention for all of the systems, so whether it be RetroArch, uh, WinVice, PPS, PP, um, PCSX2, all of the emulators need to be opened outside of Emulation Station so that you can configure your controllers. Um, right now I have every system set to launch full screen. Alt F4 is to exit every system, so Alt F4 will be your exit button. For retro arc based systems, you can use your controller to exit. For other emulators, I haven't figured out how to do that, so I've just gone ahead and done Alt F4 for every system. Uh, that'll be up to you to configure controllers, uh, stuff like that. Um, you'll find all that online. I haven't gone through and configured my controllers. My main thing for this build was to get it functional um, and give you a really nice um, updated emulation station for Windows. So I focused on getting all of the games to, to launch and run. 
and it'll be up to you to do any configurations that you need to do um, as far as controllers or anything else that you want to do. Um, so we have MAME, Final Burn Alpha, 2600, 7800, Jaguar, Lynx, NES, Famicom, Famicom Disk System, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Virtual Boy, Game & Watch, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, Sega SG-1000, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Sega 32X, Sega CD, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, Game Gear, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PSP, TurboGrafx-16, PC Engine, 3DO, Commodore 64, Scum VM, WonderSwan, WonderSwan Color, and Cody. So really quickly, um, I will launch Cody. So we'll go into Cody. This is Cody 17.3, the latest version, and it runs in portable mode so that it can be used anywhere you want to go. If you have this on an external hard drive, you want to use it on someone else's computer, then this Cody is going to keep all of your settings and stuff like that within its own folder so that you don't have to worry about setting everything up each time you plug it into a different computer. I mean, the whole basis, uh, the basis of this is to make it portable. And uh, this is what's going on. So Cody's here. I haven't installed anything. It's a fresh install. I'm going to click the power button. Click exit. There's MAME. Final Burn Alpha. So basically, um, let's see. Let's do, um, I don't know, PlayStation 2. We'll go here. So here is the Simpsons skateboarding. This is the bin file, crush hours, and ISO file. So I'll just quickly launch crush hour. And PCSX2 will launch full screen. So there we go. I don't have a controller set up right now, um, but I'll hit Alt F4. Takes you right back. I've got that set up for everything and that's that's pretty much it that's my updated version of Herb Fargus's portable emulation station so that's everything uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video please like uh, subscribe to the channel um, if you're a patreon thank you very much for, for the support um, if you're not a patreon consider checking out my patron page um, it really helps me get these builds going, um, you know, and get as as much online storage as I can. I'm also going to try and upgrade uh, to a better microphone. Right now I'm just using uh, my new webcam microphone because it's louder than my laptop built-in microphone. Uh, but it's still not the greatest, so I'm trying to uh, to grow my channel as much as I can. Uh, this, this version um, of Portable Game Station will not be uh, patron only this will be a free download um, for everyone now the link will be in the description on the release video I will be releasing this uh, as soon as I can uh, this is just a preview video so it'll be available there and it will also be available on my patron page uh, for free it won't be under uh, patrons only as I mentioned so um, Again, I just want to give a big shout out and check out their their YouTube channels and GitHubs. Um, so we'll start with Herb Fargus, check him out. Jay Rasa, check him out, and also David Marty. All all excellent work by these guys, and uh, my hats off to them. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day.